Welcome back to John's Films. Have you ever shot footage that has dust spots on your sensor? What did you do with it? In DaVinci Resolve, there is a setting to remove it, but how does it work and does it work real well? Well, two things got me looking at this. One, a buddy gave me a giant lens, 1300 millimeters, and it's F8, F16. I started shooting airplanes for fun. Why not? Then I learned I have a bunch of gunk on my sensor. Luminar Neo came out as well. That one has automatic dust reduction. How does that compare in still photography to Resolve? Let's go look into Resolve first and see if we can figure out how it works. I wish I could tell you in the name of science I added dirt into my lens. Unfortunately, it was already there and you'll notice, man, this is crazy. You really notice it when it starts moving and I've put some circles around it so that we can keep track of where these are and we'll know if we've got it removed. I've built a node, named it Dirt1. It is currently empty, and I think I'll use automatic dirt removal. Well, that makes sense. Unfortunately, what you don't realize, automatic dirt removal is not for this type of dirt or dust. This is for old school film strip, where dirt could get wound up into it or maybe show up on just a few frames, but not all of them. Uh, I have a more persistent problem than that. Let's keep looking. Dust Buster. Hey, that sounds like it makes sense. Well, according to the manual, when automatic dirt removal doesn't work for your transient dirt, you use Dust Buster. <laughs> Again, not my problem. I've got a much more persistent problem. And that's when we call on object removal. To use object removal though, the first thing we have to do is pop up a power window by changing here and clicking a power window. You need to isolate the object that you would like to remove. So let's scroll on in. And it says, be as tight to it, hug the curves of it is literally what it says. Hug the curves as tight as you can, leaving a little bit of feathering on the edge. And I think that helps it blend back into the environment when it replaces it. Picking the most prominent piece of dust in this, I've now got a power window directly around it. And I am ready to grab the object removal OFX and drop it directly onto my color note. Here, I can make sure I've got the dirt. Yeah, I've got it covered there. Okay, good, by using the mask overlay. And I click Scene Analysis. The Scene Analysis creates a little bit of pain on my computer, not too much. It appears to be lightly threaded. And if we go to the CPU, you can see logical processors. It's really only using a couple of, in fact, one maybe processors associated with this. And crank it along. The GPU is doing some of the work as well. A lot of that though in the encode and decode space just to be able to read the frame efficiently. There we go. Oof, what is that? Playing that back, you can see using the current settings that I have, not magical. Just took it and put middle gray directly over the top of it, it looks like. Instead, I'm going to now take a look at some of the options. Yes, I do have motion. My camera is not fixed, so I will not assume no motion but oh look at that the scene mode i'm actually removing an object so i will choose object and let it do some analysis 40 analysis boundary this tells you how many frames before and behind each of the frames that you're processing do you want it to look at to determine what might be suitable for replacement and the last thing i'm going to do is change my render mode to be adaptive blend oh wow even doing that right up front look at that without shifting and reanalyzing for scene. Just changing to adaptive blend seems to have done quite a bit of good work. Let's see if it holds on here at the end. There was a flicker in which we lost some of, right? No, oh, it really stuck to it well, didn't it? Wow, impressive. In this case, I didn't even have to go back and do more scene analysis. The boundary object that it used here worked pretty well. You may ask me, hey, John, in the analysis, what's the optimal analysis boundary? Well, here we are in the manual, and this is one of my favorite quotes. You will generally get the best results for the smallest range that gives acceptable result. Huh? Yeah, you get the best results when you get the best results, and you'll like it. Okay. Well, frankly, I do like it. This tool is really cool, works really well, and I really don't have to do much magic to it. But let's see what happens if I try something that might be a little bit more difficult, say a clip where I've panned through trees. Here's my clip, power window, click on the power window, shrink it way, way down, pull it up over the top, zoom in with my mouse wheel, 
and we can see that is the object I want to get removed. So I shrink down on it a little bit more, get it nice and tight, feather it out a touch. There we go. Drop my object removal on it, ensure that OFX is there, and now I can click Scene Analysis. This gets more interesting, doesn't it? Because it has to run through those trees. The question is, when it replaces the object, does it just put a big blotch of sky there? Is it going to look like a hole in the trees? Let's find out. Oof. Well, we know what to do about that now, don't we? We come down and choose Blend Mode Adaptive. Ugh. And that is not turning out quite as well as we hope. Okay. Well, let's see what it looks like when we do play it back. Here we go. We know where that is. It's behind that. Looks really good in the gray, but you noticed at the beginning. Let's go back to that. Ugh, not great. If we zoom it out further, come back down here, we're overriding some of that. Now, in the grand scheme of things, is it noticeable? Let's find out. Remember, it's this one here. Oh yeah, that's noticeable. That is not fantastic. Here we go, it's right up there. Ugh. That doesn't work so well. Now I've upped the Adaptive Blend search range, which makes it look further in the future and in the past to figure out what might go there. It's still not optimal. And that's really what you're doing. You've got a clean plate that you could build out. You could try and make the mask a little bit better. But the reality is you've got dust on your lens. Clean it off before you shoot. If you do run into this situation and you need some help, the object removal tool is where you need to go. But let's avoid this. Prevention's 99% of the cure, right? Thanks for watching. Help me out by hitting that like button if this has been helpful for you. Otherwise, have a great day.